I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. Today we are crossing from Idaho into Wyoming through Teton Pass. Such a beautiful area. Here we are, Wyoming. We've reached the top of the pass at 8,431 feet or 2,570 meters above sea level. But there's no oversized parking, so we have nowhere to go but down. I believe this might be our first glimpse. Here we are, Jackson, famous town, very touristy, a ski resort in the winter, the site of the annual Jackson Hole Economic Symposium, and gateway to Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Parks. Here's the town square with its famous elk antler arches at each corner. We'll be back later, perhaps to imbibe some craft ales or sample the local cuisine, but for now, the Tetons await. I'm gonna try to stay at the Grovant campground, which is located near the southern entrance to the park. I've got no reservations, and it is afternoon, but it is Sunday, so I have a good feeling about this. Oh, look at that, brand new pedestal. Well, this is my campsite here at uh, Gros Vent Venter campground. It is actually pronounced Grovant. Very nice, and we have Electrical, as you saw. Now let's go explore the park. I was kind of worried that I wasn't going to be able to, to find the campsite, but as you, as you can see, we, I did. Perhaps a little on the pricey side at $55 for electric, but they also have primitive sites for $30. And we are right here inside the national park. And part of the appeal of staying at Grovant is that we are very close to this dirt road called Mormon Row, from which we are going to be able to see one of the most iconic views of Grand Teton. It says four-wheel drive or high clearance recommended. Or being the keyword. Yeah, because we've certainly been on worse roads than this. Remember Death Valley? Now, in wet conditions, it could be a different story. There it is, Le Grand Teton. A YouTuber once said that it would sound very funny in French, so any French speakers out there? Well, here's where we take the iconic photograph with the barn. We may not have the best light here in the early afternoon, but it is still an impressive sight. And we've all seen so many pictures of the Tetons with the molten barn in the foreground that being here in person, is quite special, actually. Let's continue going towards the main road, US 191. Continue on Antelope Flats Road for one and a half miles. Jackson Hole is the busiest airport in the whole state of Wyoming, and I have a feeling these pretty mountains may have something to do with that. What have we got here? Let's stop real quick. What are you looking at? Well, when it comes to first impressions, Grand Teton does not disappoint. We just got here, literally less than an hour ago, and here's the welcoming committee, this herd of bison. Okay. 
Timing is everything, huh? <laughs> Let's pass by the visitor center and see what it's like in there. Maybe they have information about the trails. I would like to do a couple of trails. And here we are. There's a life-size moose sculpture here and a fairly detailed raised relief map. It wouldn't be a national park without one, right? I want to get some information and the trail map because tomorrow I want to go for a hike. So I inquired about uh, something not too long or too strenuous. Just gonna, you know, drive around, drive around the park, do the loop road, get the lay of the land, as I said. Tomorrow we're gonna do a hike. One curious fact is that as long as you stick to this area on US 191, you know, east of the Snake River, it is free. But if you want to go west, that's when you have to pay or show your annual pass. With good reason, it is the best part of the park. This here, by the way, is Jackson Lake, and someone recommended we visit Jackson Lake Lodge, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Wow, nice. Generally speaking, these national park lodges are great if you want to take in the sights in style. I've also been reliably informed that there is a pretty cool bar here called the Blue Heron, where you can have an adult beverage overlooking Jackson Lake and the Tetons. Everything seems to be pretty full, but let's step inside, because you never know. But as I suspected, the bar is full, so we continue. We are now on Teton Park Road, which is closed November through May, and we are getting closer to the mountain range, going towards Jenny Lake. There's the Grand Teton. Here we are, Jenny Lake. And on a calm day, you're supposed to be able to see the reflection of the mountains. And it is supposed to be magical. I think we've had enough fun for one day, don't you think? Let's start heading back and tomorrow we'll continue exploring. I see some wildlife, so let's stop real quick. The mountain looks so great in this light. And here's our wildlife. It is said that dusk and dawn are the best times of the day to see wildlife and it is proving true.
Spotting wildlife in their natural habitat is definitely one of the best things about visiting national parks like this one. Not to mention the natural beauty. Amazing. Oh, it looks like there might be more wildlife here. Wow, is that a moose? A female moose. By the way, we are now very close to the campground by the Grovant River. And it's gone. Bye, moose. This is it, the Grovant River. And I believe we have another wildlife sighting. Beautiful clouds here as the sun sets. There it is. What a magnificent creature. A little too close, perhaps? Anything to get that perfect picture, right? Actually, I'd rather do it from here. So thank you, Kyle Allen, for inventing the zoom lens. Almost overslept, but we're here at the crack of dawn and it's 45 degrees. It's gonna be a beautiful sunrise. Why am I up at this ungodly time, you might ask? Well, not necessarily the sunrise, you'll see. Ooh, wow, look at all these people here. And I thought I was early. This is what I came for. That Ansel Adams moment as the first rays of light hit the top of the mountains. It is the best time to capture the molten barn in the foreground. The iconic photograph. I'm actually 10 or 15 minutes late if I wanted to capture the first light and it looks like many other people had the same idea. And they probably have the best angle from that spot, but this is actually not bad. It is said that the shape of the barn's roof evokes the mountains behind it. And it is arguably the most photographed barn in North America. Okay, note to self, bring a better winter coat, even if it is August, because this is insufficient. <sighs> it's cold out there, it's 45 degrees. But it's gonna be 80 in a couple of hours, so. I really wanted to do a time lapse as the sun started to hit the mountains. But as I said, I overslept. I see wildlife. Good morning my little friends. Now, 
what have we got here? We've got bison! Fascinating creatures, even from far away. Here we've got it, the lone bison grazing in the valley. Mm, a little too close, perhaps. Okay, bye, bison. Well, we're gonna go for a little hike. Perhaps not so little, actually. Uh, when I went to the visitor center yesterday, the the ranger, you know, I asked, you know, what's a good four to six mile hike? And uh, he recommended Taggart Lake. So that's where I'm going. misplaced my bug spray. I have no idea where I put it. Hopefully there will be too many bugs. Definitely one of my best investments as, uh, as a traveler. Hmm, parking lot seems to be pretty full. Must be a popular trail. Let's see the trail information here. I think I'm going to do Taggart Lake and then Bradley Lake. Apparently there is actually a trail that goes to the waterfalls, but yeah, didn't come prepared for that. We're about to cross Taggart Creek here as we're slowly making our way up to the lake. I approve. So far, this is one of the most beautiful parts of this hike. Here, with the Tetons before our eyes. Well, almost a mile in so far. Great hike. I mean, look at this magnificence. And, uh, and luckily, it's, it's a cool morning. It's probably in the, in the high 60s right now. But, but with the sun and with the exercise, I'm kind of starting to break a sweat. But... Um, at least no bugs, which, because I, I misplaced my bug spray, so that's a good thing. I'm gonna continue going. This, uh, we've done a mile, this goes to Taggart Lake, another half mile. And Bradley Lake is one mile that way, but there's another way around. <laughs> we'll go to uh, Taggart Lake, and then we'll go clockwise into Bradley Lake. Just can't get over how beautiful this is. Now going into the woods. Yeah, we're now in this wooded area and all of a sudden, I'm all by myself. Next chance I get, I'm gonna get me a can of bear spray because you never know. I think we've made it to Taggart Lake. Taggart Lake elevation 6902. There's a ranger here giving a talk. And um, let's see if we can get close to the water. 
don't hold me to that. The lakes, in general, are deeper than you suspect. The water is so clear and so calm that the reflections are nearly perfect. Like a mirror. It is so beautiful. Let's walk around the lake a little bit and see it from a few different angles, from a few different points of view. Look at that. You can even see the bottom. It is just amazing. A few more ripples on the water now, but still crystal clear. Well, these views here definitely, definitely worth the hike. Uh, now we're gonna go to the other lake, Bradley Lake, I think it's called. And then I think we're gonna go back the same way we came in. By the way, nice view that way too. Let's continue walking now towards Bradley Lake, and there are many secluded lake access points like this one. just can't get enough of this. Every once in a while I just can't help myself and take a detour from the main trail, a side trail, to admire the view. Bradley Lake is at a little higher elevation, so it is a little more of a climb, a little more strenuous hike. Still not too bad. And we've found Bradley Lake. Let's start heading back. What a magnificent place this is. Have I said that before? And we're back by Taggart Lake. Notice the lake is not nearly as reflective as it was before. It's 1.4 miles to the parking lot. Let's do this. Just 
Just another walk in the woods. Very grand. Uh, I think I'm lost. I don't remember seeing all these horses when I was coming up. But who knows? Can you believe I took a wrong turn? All right, this looks familiar. Now we're on the right track. Next stop, Schwabacher Landing, which is arguably one of the best views of the Tetons, if we can top what we've already seen. I've heard great things about this spot. The final stretch is through this well-maintained dirt road. It is a short trail to what is basically a beaver dam here on the Snake River. Yeah, hard to fathom, it is the same Snake River we saw a couple of days ago in Idaho. And this is the thing, because of the beaver dam, this is one of those places where on a calm day you can see the Tetons clearly reflected on the water. I hear sunrise is actually the best time. Let's go into town. I'm hungry, and I think today I've earned that IPA. I'm just gonna park right here and walk around. The main downtown area is not very large, so it is very walkable, and they have all kinds of touristy stuff and outdoor activities. Maybe one of these days I'll go whitewater rafting. What do you guys think? Let me tell you, it seems like a fun town with lots of dining and drinking options, but I'm gonna go try this brewery, the Snake River Brewery. It seems to be good. So yeah, I'm having a beer, of course, and a bison burger. Hmm, I should have brought one of my stickers. That was a decent burger, a little dry, but really good beer. This is pretty much the iconic spot here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, the, the main square with all these antlers here. They have live music. That's the cowboy bar. I mean, I, 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 I did a little bit of research. There's a lot to do here. Unfortunately, I am only staying here for one night. So I went to the brewery, as you saw. Very cool, the brewery full of, of locals, by the way. I guess those must be the ski slopes, huh? By the way, free plug to Lolojo. I did a lot of my research about this area watching their video. And uh, I think they did go to that cowboy bar and some other bar. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna do any more bars, let's just put it that way. Now I'm gonna go to that road, it's a dirt road that uh, where they claim they saw bears. So let's see, maybe we get lucky. We've seen bison, we've seen elk, we've seen, uh, seen moose. We've seen all kinds of wildlife. It's been really cool actually. 
Yeah, someday I'll come back and go to that cowboy bar. But for now, let's go get the car, go back to the park. Jackson Hill Playhouse. Ooh, what do we have here? It's almost like a saloon. It's actually the playhouse. Oh yeah, this is where I parked. Good old Colorado needs a, needs a car wash very soon. For our final drive of the day, we are going to take the Moose Wilson Road. Rough road, okay. There are a few trailheads on this road, but uh, what I really want to see is some wildlife. And there's a couple of spots coming up ahead. Let's see if we get lucky. I see something over there. See the yellow piece? Yeah, I see the orange. Hmm, doesn't look like a moose. I don't know, maybe it is a female moose. I don't know, not my area of expertise anyway. I think we should end the day at our old familiar place, near the campground by the Grovant River. Well, no moose yet. But we've got a couple of beavers here to add to our list of wildlife sightings. Well, what do you know? There he is, Mr. Moose in the house. I wonder how much wildlife is really out there, invisible to the untrained naked eye. I can't think of a better way to end our last day here in Grand Teton National Park. Good morning everybody, beautiful day here in Grand Teton National Park, but today we're moving. We're going a few miles north to another great national park, Yellowstone. As I mentioned, still in Grand Teton National Park, Yellowstone, just a little over an hour drive north of here. Before we continue, let's go into Dornans, fill up the tank, because you never know. And this is one of those few places in the park where you have restaurants and shops and grocery store and gas. Yeah, I can turn on a dime. I guess to go into Yellowstone, you have to go into Grand Teton first. I wonder if they would charge you for both, I would imagine, right? I forgot to ask since I have the annual pass, but it would be good to know. Saying goodbye to the Tetons for now, as we take one final look over Lake Jackson. Now, onto Yellowstone National Park. We are almost there. There's gotta be a way that they can streamline this process, like an express lane or something like that. I've decided to stay at Lewis Lake Campground, which is the closest one to the entrance and the only one I know for sure has vacancy. Alright, 
This will do, and I'll probably get plenty of solar. Well, greetings from Yellowstone National Park. We're staying here at uh, Lewis Lake, which is the first campground you encounter uh, when you come in uh, from the south. And it's the only one that I knew for sure was gonna have a vacancy, so I decided, you know, might as well. Uh, we're kind of an hour away from all the good stuff. We're here at Lewis Lake. I'm thinking going to the Grand Village here, the information station, all this area, the lake. And then come to Old Faithful, see if there's not too many people and we can see it because it might be better to see it in the afternoon the, the, according to lighting, you see? If north is uh, that way, the lighting is coming this way, but it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna go here to the Prismatic Spring, Madison, and you pretty much go around the Canyon Village. Uh, that's the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone and then go back and then tomorrow we will go all the way up here and I might save Lamar Valley for the day after tomorrow as we leave this way. All right, let me show you our campsite here real quick. We have one of these bare boxes to store food if we were in a tent or or, a, or in a pop-up and then down here we have our picnic table firing and this whole area here which is it's kind of private I like it so that's our site let's go explore Yellowstone I feel I must point out no AT&T cell phone coverage whatsoever in this part of the park so we're going to spend a couple of days mostly off-grid also the campground doesn't allow generators so I really hope I get some solar today Hmm, wildlife sighting, perhaps? Let's stop real quick. Where could it be? There it is, but what is it? Some kind of deer, perhaps? I don't know, it is hard to tell from here, but it is our first wildlife sighting in Yellowstone. How exciting. Well, uh, our, our first uh, Yellowstone wildlife, I don't know what that was. It looked like a large deer, but I don't know. <laughs> Our first stop is going to be the West Thumb Geyser Basin, right on the shore of Yellowstone Lake. Here we are, let's walk around a little bit. They have this boardwalk, because apparently it would be very dangerous to walk around all these hydrothermal features. We wouldn't want to fall into one of these pits of boiling water now, would we? Before coming here, I didn't think much of Yellowstone, to be honest, and all these steaming hot springs and all that, but being here in person, it's actually quite the unique experience. There was a ranger talk there and she explained, you know, everything about geysers and, uh, and hot springs, which is this, and fumaroles and, uh, and mud pits, I think it was, and mud, something. Anyway, it's the most interesting that the color of the, of the water determines the, the temperature, like blue is, uh, is, um, is the hottest and then green, and then uh, well, brown is like the least, uh, the, the coolest and that color is determined by the bacteria that live in the water, which is pretty cool. I can feel, I can feel the, the steam coming off this one. This one is called Black Pool. Look how clear and deep it is. Amazing colors. Let's go see Old Faithful. By the way, I don't know if I'm ever gonna need it, but I, I bought a can of bear spray just in case because I'm hiking by myself and uh, I don't even know if I'm gonna do a long hike tomorrow, but it's good to have. 52 bucks is expensive stuff. If you can save your life, it's totally worth it, right? Well, there's this pull out on the way to, to uh, Old Faithful where there is 4G LTE, well, not LTE, just 4G signal. So if, if you are like me, they, I, I forgot to download offline maps and stuff like that. Uh, you want to check, check in with family 
or what have you, this spot has it. I'm trying to download a podcast, but that's taking longer, so uh, that might not work. All right, we continue towards Old Faithful. It is really a theme park sized parking lot. Here we are at the old faithful visitor education center. Look at it out there. I didn't film it, but inside the visitor center they have several screens with predicted eruption times of some of these geysers. And we're in luck! Grand Geyser is gonna go off any minute. It only erupts every seven hours or so and it is the tallest predictable geyser in the world that we know of. This should be quite a show. The amount of thermal activity here in the upper geyser basin is mind-boggling. This one is called Castle Geyser. Here goes Old Faithful. We'll go back to see Old Faithful later, since it goes off every hour or so. There's the Old Faithful Inn, iconic hotel, and we'll go there later too. Here we are, pretty big crowd to see Grand Geyser, and that's our one and a half hour window. Any moment now. Originally, I wasn't too excited to see geysers. I was like, well, it's just like a fountain, right? But it is not. <laughs> and you really have to be here to appreciate it. The steam, the smell, and the fact that this happens naturally, in such a controlled fashion, if you think about it. Just by the interaction of water and magma inside the earth crust, it is truly fascinating. Notice a new discharge to the left now, almost pure steam. It's like it is evolving. Very cool to see. Not as high as it was at the beginning, but the pressure on the left seems pretty legit. It's like a real show. Let me tell you, the Bellagio fountains have nothing on Grand Geyser here. Just cue some Andrea Bocelli and we'll be set. I'm joking, of course. Let's not Disneyfy it more than it already is. That was a great show. Now let's continue. Isn't that something? Ever wonder how deep it really goes? This one is called Spasmodic Geyser, and I can see why. a surreal place here, uh, this uh, Geyser Hill, I think it is called, uh, here in, in Yellowstone, because 
everywhere, all, all around you. It's, it's this, you know, steam coming off the ground. And uh, I, I didn't think it was going to be as impressive as it is in person. So definitely really, really cool to be yeah. here. And back there, that was a, 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 a lucky, you know, serendipitous uh, synchronous, synchronous coincidence that that I got here at the moment that uh, the, the, the grand uh, geyser was about to, to erupt, you know, and it's the, the tallest predictable geyser in the world, which I didn't know that. I, you know, I, luckily, I went by the visitor center uh, to find out and because uh, I was going to go straight for Old Faithful which, you know, I can wait another hour and it'll go off again. Which goes to show, you can plan the trip as much as you want, but you never know what events are going to transpire uh, that, you know, are going to, to... In other words, be flexible and uh, f follow follow the, your, your flow and, and... Walking across the aptly named Firehole River, because I'm sure there's a lot of fire in the form of magma deep below the surface well it is 420 and uh, all old faithful here is supposed to to erupt at 437 so i'm gonna get in position here so i got a good view and then maybe we might go to the lodge just to see it all right let's do what we came here to do originally lots of people Lots of people, I'm telling you. Oh, the anticipation. Hey, what happened? Changed your mind? Hmm, another false start. Well, there you have it. Perhaps the most famous geyser in the world. And we just saw it erupt. The nice gentleman with the big camera took a picture of me taking a picture of the geyser. That's it. Show's over. Well, that was Old Faithful. Now let's see what else we can see here in there. Oh, let's go, let's go to the lodge real quick. It is certainly a very unique lobby with this tall atrium, pendulum clock, the wooden construction, which, fun fact, was apparently the inspiration for the construction of Disney's Wilderness Lodge. Very, very cool. Let's see if they have a bar somewhere around here. And they do. It is called the Bear Pit Lounge. And they have a Going to the Sun IPA. You know me, always like to try the local craft beer. Let's continue. By the way, this lobby, it is something else, isn't it? hotel and it certainly has that grand atrium in the middle and all the wooden construction very cool 
and then there's Old Faithful right there. And there's no one here now. I guess we are in between eruptions, but <laughs> probably came at the busiest time of the day possible. Oh, look at that. We gotta stop, right? This is called Grand Prismatic Spring, part of the Midway Geyser Basin. So that's where all the water's coming from, right? The Excelsior Geyser Crater? No, actually, the actual spring is a little further up and it flows onto the Firehole River here. It almost looks like a tropical beach. Look at the texture on the rock. This happens to be the park's largest hot spring, by the way. And here we are. This is the actual Grand Prismatic Spring. Right here. Amazing. All right, let's go back. By the way, the spring pours almost 500 gallons of water into the Firehole River every minute. I decided to stop real quick by this waterfall, mainly because I had to go to the bathroom, but, you know, just to take a break. The sun's going down real quick. There it is. It is called Gibbon Falls. Very pretty, actually. Hello there. This was actually a very nice stop here to break up the drive. Very nice. Now let's see if we can make it to the, to the canyon. It's called the Grand Canyon of, your, of Yellowstone, I, I believe. Well, we're running out of time. We're gonna make it back to the campground at night. Whenever you see people parked on the side of the road, it can only mean one thing. 
wildlife. And we've got ourselves a bison, a lone bison grazing in the valley. Well, now we can say we saw our first Yellowstone buffalo, or bison, bison. Let's continue towards the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Of course, tomorrow we might revisit some of these areas, the Canyon Village, for example, right here. But right now it's 7.30, it's sunset, it's in about an hour. And uh, I'm just gonna go to this one last viewpoint, the artist point. And um, that's it. Ooh, more wildlife. What are those? Well, those are some tourists photographing the locals, and uh, once in a while you still encounter someone using an iPad. And sometimes you have to be more careful about the humans than the beasts. Definitely is the right time of the day for wildlife uh, sighting, that's for sure. Let's check it out, it looks promising from here. That's quite amazing, actually. There they are, the lower falls of the Yellowstone River. Pretty impressive, actually. Yeah, right now I can tell this is gonna be a much better uh, picture in the morning, but still. Tomorrow, first thing in the morning, we're doing this. Let's head back to the car. This is Hayden Valley, and it is supposed to be one of the best wildlife viewing areas in the whole park, so keep your eyes peeled. can't see anything, so we're gonna continue. The only wildlife I saw there was a mosquito trying to bite my finger. So, um, I think he succeeded. Okay, let me guess, wildlife. Well, yeah, we've got ourselves a bison. Well, that was a cool bison sighting and there's more traffic ahead, so maybe there's more. Let me see. Let me see if I can remember how to do the night vision here. Uh, Boom, yes, we have night vision on the on the Sony. So if we see any other if it gets any darker. Yeah, there's another one. Several. And it's gone. Well, good morning. I did manage to kill my battery last night at the one campground where they don't allow generators. Although I see my neighbor idling there, so I might idle a little bit just to give a little help. Not until the, the solar takes over. 
Um, it looks like we're gonna get good solar today. So uh, let's get ready to explore the park. Well, yeah. While we wait for the battery to recover a little bit, let's um, let's explore a little bit of the, the, the this lake that we have right here next to the campground, Lewis Lake. Lots of new people in the campground today. Our camper barely fits there. Where's the Minitinis twin? Well, let's go check out the lake. Stopped by Grand Village. Hmm, there's a restaurant. I can eat, so let's have breakfast. Breakfast with a view. A decent breakfast, buffet style, nothing extraordinary, but you know, it filled me up. Well, after breakfast, I decided to come back to Minitini and. Um, my, my problem is obviously not solar. Now that I have, you know, the sun is shining, even at an angle, I'm get, you know, I, I, power was back on mini teeny. I was able to shower, you know, everything. I changed into my brand new um, Yellowstone uh, t-shirt. We've got some wildlife again here. This seemed to be elk, female elk. First thing we're gonna do now is drive around Yellowstone Lake, all the way to the Lake Butte Overlook, and then continue north towards the Grand Canyon. There are many of these vista points all along the lakeshore. I believe that over there would be the West Thumb Geyser Basin, where we were yesterday, actually. My RV. We're pretty much driving around Yellowstone Lake, um, you know, to, to, to see the, the different uh, vistas for 10 miles. Uh, before heading. Oh, this was a nice view, and I missed it. Uh, before heading north towards uh, the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. Hmm, that must be the Lake Yellowstone Hotel across the lake. Coming this way, perhaps not the brightest idea, because there's a lot of road construction. But I wanted to see this part of the park, and we even have a lone bison here on the side of the road. There's Steamboat Point, with all the steam coming out, and we're gonna stop there for a few minutes. Steamboat Point. Very, very nice views. And all the thermal activity makes it even more interesting. What a surreal place this is. Now going up to Lake Butte Overlook. And here we are. Well, this is the view here from the Lake Butte Overlook. Overlooking Lake uh, Yellowstone or Yellowstone Lake. Very nice, beautiful views from up here. Uh, as Rick Steves would say, commanding views.
Looking south, way out there in the distance, we can even see Grand Teton. Definitely. Way out there in the distance. Grand Teton. Next up, Lee Hardy Rapids, here on the Yellowstone River. They have this boardwalk here so we can walk by the rapids. And this is technically the end of Yellowstone Lake, the first dramatic change in elevation. Beyond this point begins the stretch of river that eventually leads to the upper and lower falls and carves the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. Apparently a great spot to see fish migration, but that happens in May, and we're here in August. Let's continue. Next up, the Mud Volcano. This area is characterized by muddy hot springs and fumaroles and we're very close to one of Yellowstone Volcano's vents. Let's hope it doesn't go off while we're here. Well, let's go see the Dragon Mouth Spring and then we'll do the, the whole thing. Continue. Going up, there's a lake up there. This year is called Sour Lake. I wonder where the name comes from. You think someone tasted it? It's a fumarole. And you can hear it now that there's nobody around. It's almost like pink noise. Well, if anything, it was worth the stop. If anything, just for the view, right? Of the, of the Yellowstone River. Continue on Grand Loop Road for eight miles. Is that a bison over there? Sure is. Bison alert. <laughs> We're in Hayden Valley, after all. Let's stop. Let's see what they are seeing. I think it is the same bison we saw earlier. Beautiful valley, by the way. I see something, I see something, let's zoom in. It's a bison! It seems to be another bison traffic jam. That's what I'm calling them. There it is, big bison.
here we are, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. And yesterday we did the South Rim, today we are going to do the North Rim. Mm, it's a busy parking lot. Luckily, there's parking along the side of the North Rim Drive here. Let's walk. This is the trail here. There's the canyon down there. But I'm gonna keep going. There's gotta be a better view. We are really close to the falls here, so maybe I should do that first. So let's look for the trailhead. A couple of people recognize me now. I think they're the fourth or, or the fifth in this uh, whole area. So that's really, really super cool to, to meet viewers on the road. All right, let's go to the bathroom and then cruise America. Remember those? This is more or less the size RV. If I were going to if I were going to go to the Class C route, this is like a 20, 21 footer or something like that, or maybe even less. The only problem with this particular model is that it has a wet bath. If they, if they would make one with a dry bath, I'd be in. Here's a pretty good view of the canyon. Too bad it is cloudy because sunshine would make it look a lot more dramatic. Here we are, found the trailhead, and there's some information. Let's see what the sign says. That's not bad. Let's do it. Okay, so we are here. We're gonna go to the lower falls. And then we're going to try to go all the way to the inspiration point. Upper falls is closed, so an artist point. That's where we were yesterday. Okay, let's do it. That's the upper fall, that's the one that is closed. Lower force versus down. We're almost there. The thing is, we've been going down and down on all these switchbacks and uh, eventually we're gonna, we're gonna have to go back up. <laughs> fortuitous that the sun came out exactly at the moment we arrive here and uh, we get to see a rainbow. It's quite a view, actually. I'm impressed. I didn't think I was gonna be as, as awe-inspired by the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. No, there's only one thing to do. Go back up. Well, I was gonna hike it, but I'm gonna drive it instead because you know, time is kind of of the essence. What I'm going to do is stop at some of the overlooks along the North Rim. It is very crowded. There's still a I believe that's probably Artist Point, where we were yesterday.
let's keep going because there's still a lot to see here. I mean, we're not gonna be able to see everything, but let's see as much as possible. Let me tell you something infrastructure-wise, this is probably one of the best national parks that I've been to, considering how um, remote it is. You know, they have all these villages, I don't know how many they are, but there are like four or five of those. They all have gas stations, convenience stores, actually a large like, supermarket style convenience store and the visitor center. And um, yeah, the only thing missing is cell phone coverage. They should work, work on that, but we're, we're here to commune with nature after all. But I would, I would love to be able to post to Instagram. <laughs> All of a sudden, take a look at this. This northern side of Yellowstone, much more mountainous, and I like it. This here is Tower Fall. Let's take a break. Here we are, Tower Fall. Right, let's walk the short 150 yard trail to the Tower Fall Overlook. Here we are. In any other context, it would be a beautiful waterfall, but we are in Yellowstone. Well, that was somewhat underwhelming considering all, all the beauty we've seen. Let me tell you, other than Tower Fall, I think I like this part of Yellowstone even more from a scenic landscape point of view. You know, I'm a mountain kind of guy. The caldera is, of course, unique and uh, surreal in its own way, but I think this is more my type of thing, in a scenic sense. A tour on horseback would be cool, actually. Let's take a quick break here at this vista point and uh, admire the scenery. I think I see it, our next destination. We're going to Mammoth Hot Springs. Here we are. What a strange place this is. It almost looks man-made. Well, this is totally different from anything else we've seen in the park, that's for sure. This area is called Minerva Terrace. Mammoth Hot Springs has been described as an inside-out cave, and I kind of see why. We are here. It is again one of those things that perhaps doesn't photograph all that well, but it is quite incredible to see it in person. This section is called the Mound Terrace.
This is incredible, mind-boggling. I, I guess without really knowing it, I saved the best for last. Let's go up these stairs here. Very nice views of the town from this higher point. Let's go back down. We're here now we're gonna see Cleopatra's uh, terrace and then boom boom boom. There's Cleopatra's Terrace, definitely an inside-out cave. Check it out. Wildlife. Apparently, these wildlife sightings here are very common in Mammoth Springs because these folks are all over the place. I guess they come later in the day. Tired? We're gonna take a short trip to Gardiner, which happens to be the northern and first entrance to Yellowstone National Park. And it is the site of the Roosevelt Arch, which, by the way, is in Montana. I don't know if that qualifies me to add the Montana sticker to my map, but I might cheat when it comes to Montana and add it anyway. Oh, we're in Montana. Can I put the sticker now? Here we are, Gardiner. It looks like a fun and historic town, but we're just here to see the arch. This is it, the Roosevelt Arch, constructed in 1903 marking the northern entrance to Yellowstone. President Roosevelt himself laid out the cornerstone. It also commemorated the Organic Act of 1872, with a quote from it, which reads, for the benefit and enjoyment of the people. Let me tell you, very tempting to explore Gardiner here a little bit, but we are over two hours away from the campground and it is getting late. <laughs> that Colorado has been places, huh? And we're back in Mammoth Springs. Are you folks uh, checking into the hotel? In 600 feet, your destination will be on the right. Nice of them to have a welcoming committee. <laughs> Look what I got. Wyoming whiskey. A small batch bourbon whiskey distilled barreled bottled by in Kirby, Wyoming. But I thought in, in order for it to be called bourbon, it had to be made in Kentucky. Maybe they changed the rule. In any case, Wyoming uh, whiskey, we're gonna give it a try tonight. Uh, but now we have a two hour drive back to, to our Lewis Lake campground. Hopefully it'll pass quickly. Hopefully we'll see some wildlife along the way. As you saw, very touristy, very crowded, you know, tour buses in and out, <coughs> tourists from all over the world. I, I've heard many, many languages and when I was uh, in all these attractions. But you know what? It's crowded, but it's not Yosemite crowded. I guess this, this is more spread out. There's a lot more infrastructure, a lot more uh, parking areas. 
it, it didn't feel as crazy as Yosemite did. Of course, Yosemite, everybody's concentrated on that valley. morning everybody woke up before sunrise because uh, today we are starting a part of the trip which I am calling the beeline we're gonna try to make it back east as quickly as possible still doing something significant in each state something significant might be having lunch in some states and um, we're not necessarily gonna sleep every single state we'll see we're making up the rules as we go. But um, the idea is to make it today as close to Eastern um, Wyoming as possible. There's one more thing, something we've got to do on the way out of the park, and that is Lamar Valley. It's about two hours to Lamar Valley, which is perhaps the one thing we haven't done, the, the, one of the like top 10 things that we haven't done in the park. And uh, supposedly you get to see a lot of wildlife there in Lamar Valley, especially at this time of the day. By the way, I don't think you're supposed to, but on this west side of the lake, there's a lot of boondocking spots and I've seen people, you know, parked there that I suspect they spent the night. And uh, I saw them yesterday. You're back online. You are on the fastest route. I'm you not. Your destination by 9 a.m. She says I'm back online, but it's not true. It is gonna be a beautiful day. Or Maybe not. It is getting cloudy. You see some of these pullouts that are kind of secluded? I wouldn't be surprised if people boomed out there. People, don't get too close to the bison. Okay, let me park up here. It's a tiny little bison. Mm, not so little, actually. Causing a huge bison jam. Let's continue. Maybe I shouldn't call it the beeline because we're not going to make a beeline to like Hershey, Pennsylvania. I have a, a, a route that it's, it's going to allow me to, to hit every single state that I haven't seen yet.
here we go. We've got Bison here to greet us as we arrive in Lamar Valley. Well, hello there. Greetings from Florida. Oh man, that's a lot of bison. A little too close, perhaps. But, you know, photographers will be photographers, right? Now it's getting interesting. Hmm, not his type, I guess. Have you all had enough bison yet? Well, I have a lot more footage, but I'll save it for some other time. Maybe I'll do a bison special one of these days. And that's it from Yellowstone. Oh, wait, there's more. We wouldn't want for the bison to get all the attention, right? Just so you know, there are other species in Lamar Valley. These guys are really cute. Pronghorn antelope, according to my research, 